my name is Apoor and I work with Civic Data Lab. At Civic Data Lab, our goal is to make public data sets more accessible and actionable. We do this by building open data platforms and by working with our partners to process and analyze this data so that public data can be used as a tool for civic engagement. Moving on to a different analysis and you will see that there are a lot of different combination of maps that we have used. So for example, again going back to the overview tab which has a list of all the analysis, you see that, so let me just look at another sort of a map which is, uh, let's say the median age of candidates participating in an election. Now here you will have more than two variables. So here, so what we have done here is we have bucketed the age of the candidates. All right, into these different buckets so 0 to 35 35 to 45 so these are the different buckets and based on these buckets then we are coloring the base map so you should also see the code here now where you will find the code you go to your uh, R, you go to R studio open the analysis uh, folder inside analysis folder you will have candidate profile.rmd inside this candidate profile you see that we are using a color bin option Whereas in the caste wise constituencies or the, uh, uh, sorry, the first, uh, the gender, gender uh, map that we are seeing, there we are using the, a different color palette, which is a color factor. So color factor is different from a color bin. Uh, so that is what you need to remember. So it, it basically depends on the number, uh, the type of variable that you are trying to plot on a map. All right. So color factor is different from color bin. Now, let us go back to our uh, project website and look at apart from the apart from maps, what are some of the other interesting things that we are doing or what are what are some of the other interesting things you can do to write your data stories with R. So let me open the uh, again the cast uh, data story, which is the relationship between cast and uh, constituencies. Now here you see we have different uh, we have different types of data visualizations. The first one is obviously a map. Now the second one is a table and we also have a bar chart and we have a table and a bar chart e beside each other. So basically we are using different type of uh, data visualizations here. And the last is uh, the last one we are using is also a, a bar chart, but an invert, uh, inverted bar chart. Uh, so we have just transformed this bar chart. So we have um, horizontal lines instead of vertical lines. Uh, and also if you see uh, this is arranged in a decreasing order so let us open this file which is as a uh, cast wise constituencies in r and let us uh, just examine the code here so i'll skip the map section because we have already seen how to create a map i'll directly jump on to the uh, uh, section where we are where we are creating a where we are creating a bar chart so especially <clears throat> so first let us see so i'm uh, so the first uh, so if, if I go back to the analysis file and look at the bar chart, you see that it is caste seed distribution and it says in the in each of the categories, how many, uh, so let's say general, there were 412 constituencies, total seats out of 543, 412 were general, but there were only eight seats with at least 30% of women candidates. Now this is at a candidate level and the same thing can be plotted on the uh, bar uh, on a bar chart so let's let's just look at the code so first we are creating this uh, cast women participation variable so now you see now if I click on this uh, if I check how the variable is uh, so let me just run this code so this is the data frame which you see on the screen so you have cast you have no and yes no and yes basically means con number of constituencies where there were less than 30% of the women candidates and yes means number of constituencies where there were more than 30% of candidates for women and then you have total seats and then you have the percentage of seats which is four, um, 8 out of 412 or 6 out of 84. Now if I have to plot a bar chart out of this what I will need is a ggplot library. So ggplot library you need to tell what is on the x-axis and what is on the y-axis which is what we are doing. So first we are this is a data frame that we have just plotted and you can also see it here. Uh, now I'm calling the ggplot, ggplot function and gg, I'm telling the ggplot function that uh, using the AES, AES stands for aesthetics. So aesthetics where x-axis is cast, y-axis is women 30%, which is the 
the percentage of women or, or the percentage of seats where more where there were more than 30 percent of women candidates and the fill is the caste now what do you mean by fill fill is basically the color of the bar graph and here we are using the caste variable to color the bar graph all right now if you see the then we are calling the geom bar function because we want a bar graph we, we are calling the geom bar and stat equal to identity now what do we mean by stat equal to identity it basically means that we have to plot exactly what the variable is so let's say we have to plot 1.9 7.1 and 10.6 which is identity which is exactly what the variable is we are not plotting a histogram we are creating a bar graph so that is what we mean by stat equal to identity and then we are using a theme in this case we are using a minimal theme theme underscore minimal and there are a lot of different themes available within the ggplot package then we are uh, if you if i go back to this graph you see then there is there is a x-axis uh, label y-axis label and then you also have the title of the graph which is what i'm doing here so i'm assigning a title to the graph i'm assigning the y lab which is the y-axis label and then i'm using geom text which is uh, if i hover on this if if you if you see the uh, the values on top of the bar that is what the geom text uh, function is doing it is basically assigning a value to each of the bar all right and the uh, last thing that we are doing is assigning a color and in this case the guide is none so that is how you create a bar graph Sim and gg the same language can be used to plot a, a, a box plot a line chart you know a stack bar chart a pie chart so you will follow the same set of rules the same set of logic to create it it is also in a way called the grammar of graphics reason means that you are declaring each object of the charts by a different function so you are you are in a way you are using the grammar of graphics to build a chart so that is the you know that is the essence of ggplot2 all right so the last thing so now we have seen how to plot a map we have seen how to you know make a bar chart the last thing we will see here in this session is how to plot a table now what is a table so that there are two kind of tables that you see on the analysis uh or a notebook or a project website this is the first sort of a table where you have you know all these different variables and then you can sort the table using these column names the other sort of a table is present in the constituency data set page now here you can do you can um, you know list down that you can basically select the total number of entries you have to um, view on a page you can search for a page so for example if i write here delhi this will search for uh, wherever delhi is written and then you also have a search bar here on top of each column which is let's say if i if i remove delhi from here and if i search let's say if i search uh, kerala here so this will this is sort of a filter available for each of the columns so there are so to make all the tables and especially to make these interactive tables what we are using we are using a special package which is called dt all right now to know more about the dt package you can always visit the uh, website it's it's an r interface to the data tables library and you should read it is a very customizable and a very uh, you know functional package with with comes with a lot of features so i'm not going into the detail of it's it's very simple to use but there are a lot of features and we won't be able to cover everything in this session so let us quickly check the constituency um, uh, explore constituency data markdown and using a very so uh, again what we are doing first we are just selecting what are the variables that we have to explore so in this case we have already read a file and after reading a file we are selecting a subset of columns that we have to view and then we are calling this data table function function now this data table function is part of the dt package and inside the data table function we are saying this is the data that we have to view and we are also renaming the columns now how do you rename the columns there's a function called call names and you just in in the the order in which the columns are visible you assign the column names and then you use these different arguments to uh, add more features on the data table so in this case we are using fill container equal to true which basically means that this table is occupying the entire width of the page which is available the second one is filter equal to top which is in uh, for every column you see a search bar which is a filter uh, which is available 
and then you have page length equal to 25 so by default if i refresh this page you will see that by default only 25 entries are selected and you can control that here uh, and then this is a scroll by which is used to control the height of the table and the scroll x is used to control the horizontal uh, scroll so these are some of the different features that we are using for the data table package all right so with this we conclude our uh, uh, session on data analysis just a quick summary of what all we learned we learned how to plot a graph um, with ggplot2 another important thing we learned was to how to create interactive uh, maps using the leaflet package on our what are shape files how you know how 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 to uh, create maps using the shape files package how to read file, geo json files uh, are some of the important things that we learned because these are these these concepts will be needed at any time when you are working with any sort of spatial data and at last we saw how to create interactive tables using the tt package with this we conclude our sessions on analyzing the indian parliamentary elections data using r i hope you found these sessions useful as i said in the beginning r for me has been that multi tool or a swiss knife you know which with which you can do a lot of things and i hope uh, these sessions inspire you to learn more about r and you know so that you are also a better programmer and you can use r for different sort of use cases now a very special thing i would like to mention about r is the community um, of of users it has one of the very inclusive uh, and very uh, you know welcoming communities out there there are r events or annual conferences that happen um, r events happen throughout the year so do make sure that you apply to these events do make sure that you are a part of these events you can follow them online as well and this will definitely help you be a better r programmer as they helped me so please take care thank you mm -hmm.